Weather with Richard Scott and Sports with Gary Harris. Coming up in home team weather, we are dry now across the deep south after the morning storms have moved out, but more severe storms are possible tonight. I've got the full details coming up. The University of Alabama is grabbing the national spotlight again with Bama's softball team going after its first Women's College World Series championship. We'll have complete coverage for you. And will the prime suspect in the Natalie Holloway disappearance case be coming to the U.S.? We've got the answer. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I'm Terry Brewer. Up first tonight, the Alabama Crimson Tide is battling it out for another championship on the national scene. It is exciting Very to exciting, watch, yeah. too. Bama softball team about to head into the Women's College World Series finals for the very first time. WVUA's Todd Hoyer joins us now with more on this exciting possibility for the Crimson Tide. Todd? That's right. Thanks, Lynn and Terry. And the Tide will face Oklahoma in a best-of-three series beginning tonight. And Bama has been red hot as of late. While in Oklahoma City, they have hit more home runs than any other team. Junior Caleb Bro has the best batting average in the series. Defensively, the Tide leads the WCWS in fielding percentage. And pitcher Jackie Traina captured her school record 40th victory of the season on Sunday. Now, all that being said, Oklahoma is a very good squad themselves. And while it's technically a neutral field, in reality, Bama will be the visiting team tonight when you consider Hall of Fame Stadium is located in Oklahoma City. Now, game time is at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Later on in this newscast, I'll look back at last night's game, and we'll hear from Pat Murphy as well. Lynn, Terry, back to you. Thanks a lot, Todd. And continuing our coverage of tonight's top story, some of the smallest Alabama softball fans are talking about their excitement. That's right. They're packing their bags and heading to Oklahoma to watch the Tide in the College World Series Championship. Catherine Grill and Lexi Curley play on the 10 and under Riptide softball team. They aspire to one day be able to play on the college diamond just like the Alabama softball team. Their coach, Donnie Grill, says the girls are at 75% of UA softball games and the only thing that keeps them away are their own games. Grill and Curley say the Alabama softball girls are their role models. It makes me want to be just like them and we all look up to them. So, Well, it would be, be amazing to just get to play on a college field. The Alabama Crimson Tide softball team will take the field tonight at 7 o'clock for the first game in the College World Series Championship. On your crime watch tonight, a Tuscaloosa man is facing murder charges. Police say it happened around 11 o'clock last night in the 700 block of 31st Avenue. According to Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Captain Lloyd Baker, 22-year-old Charles Edward Thomas Jr. was found lying on the ground with a gunshot wound to his chest. He was taken to DCH Regional Medical Center where he later died. Investigators say they found the suspect, 21-year-old Lyric Smith, at DCH Northport where he checked in with a gunshot wound to the hand. Baker says after talking with witnesses, Smith was charged with murder. Now to Hale County, where the search for an escaped convict is now over. Brian Corbett with the State Department of Corrections says William Keith Bivens went missing Sunday. Authorities say he didn't turn up for the 1 p.m. institutional count and wasn't found after a search of the prison ranch. Corbett says a tip resulted in officers finding Bivens along Highway 9 in Greensboro this morning. Corbett says Bivens is serving a 33-year sentence for a robbery in Houston County. And now to Lowndes County in South Alabama where two children are missing. The Alabama Department of Public Safety says Jordan and Taylor DeGeronet were last seen in Hope Hall on Sunday. Jordan was wearing a black shirt and shorts and Taylor was wearing a blue and white jumpsuit. The twins were in the company of this man, Jack Mac Ger Gerdner. That's according to authorities. Officials say Gerdner's white Mercedes is also missing. Now, if you have any information, here's the number you can call the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office, 334-548-2151. The prime suspect in the Natalie Holloway case will be extradited here to the U.S. to face charges in connection with Holloway's disappearance. But this news comes with a twist. Holloway was last seen with Vandersloot back in 2005 while on a graduation trip to Aruba. Now Vandersloot facing charges in Alabama for accepting thousands of dollars in exchange for an unfulfilled promise to lead her mother's lawyer 
to the body. Vander Sloot is currently in prison for the murder of a Peruvian woman. That country's Supreme Court has ruled Vander Sloot will be extradited to the U.S., but not until he served out his 28-year prison sentence. Officials say this decision is not final. Peru's justice minister and cabinet must endorse the decision. Holloway's body has never been found. Lots of new developments coming, uh, to down, coming up in downtown Tuscaloosa. And that's right. Many of the plans are, are for residential spaces downtown, something there's not that much of right now. Some of these new additions are planning to be in full swing by fall. Daniel Banco opened his business, CeCe's Frozen Yogurt and Treats, earlier this year. He says business has been good, but he likes the prospect of 200 more people living nearby in the future. Join us tonight at 6 when we'll take a look at what these changes and residential development downtown would mean for the city. Some folks love nothing better this time of year than to hook up the boat, grab the rod and reels, hit the water. And in honor of that, this is National Fishing and Boating Week. Definitely something to celebrate, I would say. This weekend kicked off a week of celebration held every year during the first week of June. Organizers say the main purpose is to encourage people to get out and enjoy all that Alabama has to offer. Randy Stoltz with Lake Lurleen State Park says it's a great opportunity to get out and enjoy your free time with nature. It gives them an outlet to get away from, like I said, the everyday hustle and bustle, and then they can come out here camp, swim, mountain bike, hike, see the wildlife, do things in their community that normally they wouldn't be able to do. There's you some ideas on what to do right there. And National Fishing and Boating Week runs through June 9th. The U.S. Supreme Court has turned down former Governor Don Sigelman's request to look at his bribery conviction. Now, as we've reported in 2006, he was convicted of selling a seat on a hospital regulatory board to former Health South CEO Richard Scrushy in exchange for $500,000 in donations. Sigelman's lawyers wanted to, argue, wanted to argue the donations can't be bribes unless there's a clear agreement between the donor and the politician, and they say that was not the case. Sigelman says his heart is broken of the decision. He is free on bond and faces a new sentencing hearing. U.S. District Judge Mark Fuller could send Sigelman back to prison. In Nigeria, 153 people were killed in a plane crash, and it's unclear how many on the ground may have died. Emergency workers are using cadaver dogs and cranes to search for bodies at the site of the impact. It happened in Nigeria's largest city, Lagos. Officials say everyone aboard the Boeing MD-83 died. The cause of the crash remains unclear. Military officials say the pilots radioed the control tower just before the crash reporting engine trouble. The Red Cross reports 48 bodies have been recovered, but more are being dug out of the rubble. Well, grilling and warm weather go hand in hand, but one man in Massachusetts says he suffered second degree burns from the flames of his grill after applying spray on sunscreen. And now the company is vowing to look into that incident and a quick warning. Some of the video you're about to see may be graphic. Kate Merrill reports. All the sun just lit up on fire everywhere. Brett Sigrus says it was only a second standing in front of his barbecue grill before his body was engulfed in flames. I went into complete panic mode, just screamed. I mean, I've never I've never experienced pain like that in my life. He was at his lakefront home in Stowe entertaining friends when he did something that he says nearly killed him. Sprayed on the spray on sunscreen, then rubbed it on for a few seconds. And I walked over to my grill and uh, took one of the one of the holders to move some of the charcoal briquettes around and all of a sudden it just went out my arm. It was this Banana Boat Sport aerosol sunscreen that Brett says caught fire, not in the can, but all over his body. Just the way it burned, it went wherever the sunblock went, that's where it burned. You can see his skin is still healing. The worst was around his neck. This is uh, 10 days later. But these pictures taken in the hospital burn unit show the extent of his second degree burns on his chest, his ear, and on his back. You can see the lines where he sprayed the sunscreen. No warning that says this product's flammable when applied to your skin or for some period of time after being on your skin. The warnings only read flammable, don't use near heat, flame, or while burning, but nothing about once it's applied. If people were told this is flammable for two minutes on your skin afterward, people probably just wouldn't use it. And that's why he is speaking out to prevent this from ever happening again. I had no idea and it was so scary and I just wouldn't want to see it happen to anybody else. 
That was Kate Merrill reporting. Banana Boat released a statement saying, quote, at Banana Boat, we take these matters very seriously and will begin a prompt investigation as we continue to strive to deliver products of the highest quality to our customers.